2020, it's been a wild year. And Bitcoin, Bitcoin's starting to make a move here. Starting to look a little interested. Starting to get a little excited about the possible Bitcoin bull market to come. Talking about Bitcoin, the overall idea of investing in Bitcoin, why I'm investing in all of that fun stuff. What is going on? Giving you guys the reasons to why I'm holding, why I'm buying, why I'm selling, and why I'm getting all about that cryptocurrency world. Bitcoin, what's happening? We're at a very, very key area. Going to break it down, look at the chart and all that fun stuff right here in this video. So make sure you guys stay, stay tuned. What's good? What's good? Patrick Whelan here. And today I want to talk about Bitcoin. What is going on with Bitcoin currently pushing up to the $12,000 area? Actually, it's pulling back from the $12,000 area right now. This is the weekly chart that we're looking at. And a lot of times people get so focused on the smaller time frames when it comes to Bitcoin. But for me, Bitcoin is a long-term investment at this point for me. It's it's a thing where I'm like, I want to just have some type of long-term investment. Like I've got gold, I've got silver. Now, you know, I've got Bitcoin and a few other coins as well. And I bought a while ago, so it's not like I'm chasing this move here, you know, FOMOing into it. But let's take a look at the chart and kind of look for some key indicators and talk about why Bitcoin is making this move and what is going on with cryptocurrency today. Now, first off, I will say that there are going to be altcoins, coins, altcoins that will do, you know, massive moves. They're going to make 100, 300, 400, 5% moves for some of these altcoins. But the problem is at the end of the day, people, at the end of the day, Bitcoin is still going to remain the king. So for me, as a long-term investor in this technology, I see value mostly in the digital gold that Bitcoin is. Now, again, I'm not trying to make 100, 200, 300, 400, 500% gains every single day. For me, with Bitcoin, I'm really just trying to buy Bitcoin to have exposure for the possibility of something crazy happening in the world. That's why I own Bitcoin, gold, and silver, and not just hold cash. Now, I could easily just put all my money in the bank and earn a very, I mean, you pretty much don't even earn interest at this point, but I could do that, right? I could just put all my money into a money market account. I could just put all my money and just let it sit in the bank account and not think about it. But I would rather kind of look at different outcomes coming in the world. The idea of overall inflation with the US dollar. If you had $100, $100 that you saved, let's just say you put $100 into a jar and you had $100 from back in 1980 and you worked all in, all week long for that $100 and you put it into a jar and today you went and you got that $100 out of that jar and you went and spent it your buying power, your spending spendability is going to be much, much less than what it was worth in 1980. In 1980, a car, you could buy a car for $1,000 brand new. Maybe you couldn't, you know, two or $3,000 brand new. But today, cars cost thirty dollars to $40,000. So people always talk about everything rising in price. Everything's going up in price. It's not that everything is going up in price. It's that the U.S. dollar, the actual dollar that we use, but basically every country bases every financial transaction on, the U.S. dollar is losing its buying power quicker than, I, I mean, quicker than you can buy it, basically, at this point. So quicker than you can make it, I guess, is the way to look at it. So Bitcoin obviously has been very volatile the last few years. We've seen some very volatile moves. But the thing is, if you would have bought Bitcoin 10 years ago and you would have held it, you put it in a jar. You bought Bitcoin, $100 worth of Bitcoin 10 years ago. You put it in a jar. Today, you'd have a lot of money. I don't know exactly how much money you'd have. But in general, if you would have invested $100 back, you know, eight, six, seven, five years ago in Bitcoin, obviously that would be worth a lot more. So that's why I am investing in cryptocurrency at this time. It's not because I think that the world is one day going to use Bitcoin. It's going to be this amazing thing. Maybe that happens. Maybe it does, right? Maybe that happens. But I'm investing in 
different outcomes. I'm hedging, right? I'm hedging the idea that, look, if I've got a million dollars, do I really just want a million dollars or would I rather have $100,000 in gold, $100,000 in silver, $100,000 in Bitcoin and kind of spread out my wealth so that if I do, so that if something does happen in the future, I will be prepared. I'll be prepared for any type of outcome. If the world ends, I got my guns, I got my gold, I got my silver. If the world decides that Bitcoin is going to be the new monetary tool, well, I've got that as well. So that's that's my overall thesis. I want to put that out there. And a lot of people are going to watch this and be like, are you trying to get rich or what? Because Bitcoin's going to go down. You know, it's going to crash. It's going to be volatile, whatever. That's not my investment plan. And also, for anybody who's been following along on this channel, I talked about, I talked about this long ago, this dip down here, the $5,000 area, buying this dip. I said, hey, everybody, I think this is an opportunity. This is when the market crashes, when everything happened. We had a lot of volatility there from 10000 down. I think the low was almost $4,000, $3,000. So that was the place to be buying. When everybody else was scared and thought that Bitcoin was going to zero, well, that clearly was the time to buy because as you can see, it's now up there to $12,000. Now, let's talk about the chart, right? The chart itself. We've got a couple things going on, a couple patterns playing out here. We've got a couple patterns playing out. We've got this overall long-term trend line that you can see here. It's very clear. This really doesn't work so well on the Coinbase chart, but and here on Bitcoin. And as you can see, it's been holding that long-term trend for quite some time now. Like I said, it's it's difficult to draw it on this chart because it's a Coinbase chart and it's not showing me all the information. But in general here, let's look at this, right? Currently, we've got a couple things going for Bitcoin. We recently, this was the high, right? Obviously back here in uh, 2017, $20,000 high there for Bitcoin. We sold off from that high. We broke out. We could draw lines on this all day and get different pictures. But in general, this is kind of what we were looking at, right? This was like that overall downward trend that we had from the 20,000s. We spiked back up to the 14s. We then crashed again. We tested it one more time there at the $10,000 area for quite some time. These are weekly. This is a weekly chart, people. Weekly chart that we're looking at right now. And as you can see, look at this little setup here. You can see how long this consolidated, really consolidated for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 weeks consolidating there above $9,000, $9,000 area with that resistance there at 10000 Bitcoin broke to the upside and Bitcoin is now testing this $12,000 area. Now that $12,000 area is just going to be overall mental and just physical resistance, right? We've got just a lot of resistance really between, I'd say between like 12,000 and $14,000 is going to be obvious resistance with that last kind of run up to that $14,000 area and then it crashed back down. Now, like I said, is Bitcoin going to triple, quadruple, go to a million dollars one day? Possibly, maybe it does. Who knows? I don't know. You don't know. But there's one thing that I do know is that I don't want to miss out on opportunities. And that's why I'm buying Bitcoin. That's why I'm holding cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. And as you can see, if we look here recently, we'll look at the daily chart a little bit smaller time frames. Again, we're consolidating. We broke above this. We broke out of that consolidation area there, the 9,000 area. Bitcoin rallying up there above 10,000 and then getting tight again up here at the $12,000 area. Now, obviously, there's people who are going to say that they think Bitcoin's going to crash back down and test this $8,000 area again. Some people are saying that Bitcoin is going to crash back down and test this overall long-term trend that would put it you know, down here again at the $6,000, $5,000, $7,000, $8,000 area. So you got people that are like, okay, Bitcoin loves to kind of retest this long overall long-term trend. You got three tests there. So people were saying that Bitcoin's going to, again, want to get back down here to this $7,000, $8,000 area. But here's the thing to focus on, people. Whoa. Here's the thing to focus on is how many times have we touched this trend and what has been the overall long-term trend? Up, 
up, up, up, up. It's only been going up, even though it does make these big moves. It pulls back to that trend. It makes these big moves. It pulls back to that trend. And you can see we broke out of that kind of overall trend there. But in general, it's pretty clear that long term, the move is very bullish. And there's obviously something going on here with cryptocurrency and with Bitcoin. So for me, a lot of my investment is in Bitcoin. A lot of my investment is Bitcoin, Litecoin, and there's some other coins as well. Um, Digibyte, I got some Digibyte as well. So like I said, everybody who's skeptical about Bitcoin thinks Bitcoin's going to zero. Well, obviously the chart is telling us something different. This is back since what, 2015, 2016. Bitcoin's not going anywhere. It's not going to just disappear overnight. Are there going to be other innovations and other technology in the future? Yes, but I think at the end of the day, Bitcoin will always have this first cryptocurrency type of uh, advantage because at the end of the day, what is popular, what is the brand, even though Bitcoin's not a brand, Bitcoin is still, when people think about cryptocurrency, people think about Bitcoin. When they think about investing in cryptocurrency they think about bitcoin they think about digital gold so gold has been strong for or gold has been increasing really in value for the last 100 200 500 million years and it looks like bitcoin is following that same path in fighting inflation we've got a massive issue obviously with inflation right now the u.s government is printing and printing and printing and printing more dollars than they can even think. I mean, what was it? Six trillion dollars or five trillion dollars in stimulus money? I mean, that's five trillion dollars, people. And there's only 21, 21 million total Bitcoin. You got to think about how many Bitcoin have been lost as well. We're talking about a lot of Bitcoin. There's a lot of Bitcoin that is lost forever because people are basically, you know, uh, just not good at managing their Bitcoin, especially back in the day, like back in the early 2000s uh, you know early 2010 area like it was difficult to hold your bitcoin and obviously now it's become much simpler because now you have coinbase you have always uh you have all these websites and stuff that make it much easier to buy and sell bitcoin where even back in 2017 you know when we really had this big move it's still like it wasn't very it wasn't easy it wasn't as accessible as it is today there's a lot of apps now that allow you to buy bitcoin and that's my kind of overall bull case here is that if we do get a big, big, big bull move here in Bitcoin, the upside potential really is limitless because we have such a small supply. I'm thinking that there's 21 million Bitcoin in, in existence or there's supposed to be 21 you know, million total ever made Bitcoin. You got to think there's probably like good you know best case scenario you're thinking there's seven maybe 17 million bitcoin that is actually like going to be in existence and being traded back and forth and the rest is kind of lost on different devices or websites or people just lost it in general so that's another kind of bullish case because they're not making more bitcoin they're not printing more bitcoin they're not you know spend they're not just creating more bitcoin out of thin air so the bull case the bull case is standing strong. I'm looking at the big time frame here, the big picture. What is happening with Bitcoin? Is this the start of the next epic move here? I think obviously that $12,000, that $14,000 area is going to be real resistance for us to get over. If it can get over that, I think the sky is the limit. And really, whew, this thing has potential, potential to go, especially the way the world is going right now with everything that's happening it seems like everybody wants to in wants to have some type of alternative investment away from the government and away from this inflationary tool or inflation dollar basically i'm going to call it the inflating dollar the us dollar is just nothing but inflation 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 so there it is if you guys haven't already do me one big favor hit that like button the subscribe button and everything like that right now bitcoin at a key area that twelve thousand dollar fourteen thousand dollar area we're watching we're seeing what happens i'm going to be holding long term either way Maybe I'll buy more if it crashes back down. If it crashes back to the $6,000, $7,000 area, I'm not going to lie. I would definitely be buying more Bitcoin. If it rallies above $14,000, I've got a bunch of Bitcoin already, so I'm not worried either way. Maybe I'll buy some more. We'll see what happens. If you guys haven't already, do me one big favor. Hit that like button, subscribe button, all the buttons down below.